Hello, everyone. My name is Neil Bradbury, and I'm the co-founder and VP of Channel Development here at Intronus. I'd like to thank you for joining us today on our webinar. Managed services is not a product, it's a business model. We're happy to have Stuart Selps, managing partner and senior consultant at Stuart Selps Consulting, presenting today's webinar with us. Stuart, we just want to make sure you're there. How are you doing today? I'm good, Neil. Thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome. Before we get started, everybody, a few housekeeping notes. During the webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to share them using the Q&A panel to the right of the GoToMeeting screen. At the end, you'll also be prompted to complete a survey. We ask that you please take a moment to tell us what you think so we can continually improve the content and the quality of our online events. And we thank you in advance for that. What I'd like to do before, as we get started here is, like anything, uh, we're going to do the sponsorship <laughs> of the commercial up front. Um, I am from Intronus, um, and what I'd like to do is just say a few words about Intronus today. Intronus is the leader in cloud backup and disaster recovery. And what makes us different is we only sell to the IT channel. Our mission is to help make MSPs more successful by delivering the world's best cloud-based backup solution for resellers who serve small and medium-sized businesses. We work with MSPs all over North America and internationally. We store our partners' data in several highly secure data centers in both the United States and Canada. We developed the Intronus Echo platform, the very first data protection platform built exclusively with IT service providers in mind. The Intronus Echo platform puts the full power of our data protection technologies in your hands, letting you protect physical and virtual environments all in one place. It allows you to craft a data protection strategy that suits each of your SMB clients, protecting as much of their business as they need. It also makes it easy for you to scale your services as you grow your SMB and your SMBs grow that you service, helping you profit quickly from a partnership with Intronus. Real briefly on the technology, the Intronus Echo platform is your single source platform for all things business availability. Every business has data and applications to protect. They need data availability that will protect them from lost or corrupt files, user error, or theft. And they need access to their data from any device in any location. They also need application availability. If an operating system fails or their hardware is corrupt, they need services and solutions that will help them bring their applications back online fast. They also need full business availability. If their office is knocked offline by a power outage or technology failure, they need to know that they can spin up their office in the cloud and then fail back to their original location once the hardware is back up and running. Most of all, businesses need the ability to set these terms for themselves. They want MSPs who can offer flexible, easily priced solutions based off SM the SMB's ability to assume risk, manage cost, and based off their recovery needs. That's what they want from you. The Intronus Echo platform is a solution that can deliver all of that. Today, we'll be talking a lot about positioning your managed services business. And at the conclusion of today's webinar, this is the teaser slide, I will share the details around Intronus's new U2 pricing plan. We devised our flat rate unlimited storage plan with your success in mind. And we'd like to share how it'll help drive your business forward. I thank you for taking time to listen to the, a little bit more about Intronus. And now, Stu, I think you're still there, right? I'm still here. Thanks. There we go. Off to you, Stu. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, thanks, Neil. Thanks, Intronus, for, for having me and letting me present t today. Uh, welcome, all the attendees. Uh, really appreciate you being here. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over the agenda uh, for uh, our little webinar today. I'm going to quickly say... Uh, uh, a little bit about me. I'm going to tell you uh, why people listen to me and what they want to hopefully learn today. We're going to talk about managed services. What are they? Uh, kind of my definition and what I've been uh, kind of talking to the industry about for the last six or seven years. Um, then we're going to say forget about the technology. In your business model, we're going to forget about the technology and focus on, on the business. Uh, we're going to talk about why managed services are important to your clients, what's really important to the client and why they, why they need you, we're going to discuss value or benefit, adding value or creating benefit, and why a lot of MSPs are, are failing at growing their business. Uh, we're going to talk about the business of IT versus the IT business. Uh, I'm going to give you guys uh, some takeaways to take back to your uh, business right away. 
and we're going to have some Q&A and some special offers and, and whatnot. So we're going to have a good time. So uh, we have about an hour, a little bit under an hour, including Q&A. So I want to get into, uh, into a little bit about me. Um, uh, I'm a MSP consultant. I work with MSPs. Uh, I've got 23 years in the IT industry. I have a degree in economics from UCLA. Um, back in 2002, I started an MSP and sold it in 2007. Um, what, was, what got my MSP so successful so quickly is we took the client benefit approach to the MSP business and built processes along the way. I currently work with MSPs all over the country and have been for the last six years. I've probably trained three or four, maybe even 500 MSPs over the last six years. My typical client who, grow, who works with me and is truly engaged grows a average of 37 to 42% in new recurring revenue each year. And that's new clients, not upselling their current clients, just new uh, clients every year. The, uh, the industry has uh, uh, honored me a number of times with the uh, being named to the MSP Mentor Top 250 and the SMB Nation uh, SMB 150 uh, three times. I currently uh, have a seat on the Channel Partners Advisory Board, which is ending in September. And last year, Channel, uh, I'm sorry, Client Heartbeat named me one of the top 10 global MSP experts uh, worldwide. So a little bit about me. I kind of know what I'm talking about. I've worked with a lot of MSPs. I hope uh, a lot of you know who I am and have followed my blog or follow, follow me on, on Twitter or Facebook. So enough about that. Let's talk about my definition of managed services, okay? Managed services are simple. It's any service you can see your client once, bill on a monthly basis, and is backed by a service level agreement. A lot of people will think that managed services is the monitoring and the RMM tool and all that other stuff. That's part of it, okay? Um, a managed service can be any service, like backup, cloud backup, like Intronus. You can sell your Intronus, um, your backup, to your client, and that's the only managed service, as long as you're billing them every month, and it's backed by a service level agreement. So I think that really defines what managed services are um, because it is revolving around a business model. When I talk about forget about the technology, it's really your client doesn't care about the technology. Uh, we got to understand that we support technology. Okay? We don't typically invent it. Really, your client doesn't know the difference between Active Directory and Active Ingredient. Okay, when you start talking about uh, the ones and zeros and having to audit Active Directory and all this other stuff, you're going to get that glazed look from the client. Trust me, I've done it. I've been there. Okay, they just want what like Homer Simpson says: the any key to work. Right? They just want to come in every single day, turn their computer on, log in, get their email, get get be able to get to their P drive or Z drive, uh, work in their app, and go home. Um, that's the that's typical rank and file. If they have those problems, if they can't come in at eight o'clock, turn their computer on, get their email, then we have a problem. Okay, and a managed network will do, uh, will be able to uh, give them that peace of mind of being able to come in, turn on their computer, get their email every single day more often than an unmanaged network. Business owners want to focus on productivity and profits. And I'm a business owner, and I've been a business owner for a long time, whether it's this business I'm in, uh, MSP business uh, I had before, or other businesses before that. I cared about my staff productivity, because if my staff wasn't pr productive, then I wasn't making any money, okay? So business owners care about that. You know, sure, they care about their staff personally, but at the end of the day, they started a business to make money. And when they're hiring people, if those people are not productive because their computer doesn't work, their phone doesn't work, the internet's down, something along those lines, then they're not going to be making any money. And I'll give, it a, give an example. Let's just take a million-dollar year company with, with 10 employees, okay? So when we, when we do the math, each employee is responsible, so to speak, for $100,000 worth of, worth of revenue to the company each year. So the company's billing somewhere in the neighborhood of $500 an hour. I don't know how many million dollar companies can afford to lose $500 an hour if the staff's not productive. Okay? So that's $50 an hour per employee on average. Okay? If two employees are down, that's $100 an hour. Okay? Now if they leave to go have lunch or something like that, again, it's another $100, $100, $100. I don't know how many people can actually take $100 bills and throw them in a fire. So we need to focus on productivity and profitability for our clients. And I tell people all the time, be the solution, not the cause of the problems. Okay? Technology is 
typically a solution. We call ourselves solution providers, managed solution providers, or managed service providers. Now, if your solution's not working for the client, you need to talk to them. Okay? So many times I've seen it time and time again. I've heard it time and time again. We lost the client because. Well, you lose the client not over price, but you lose the client because you're, you haven't, you've been the problem. You're not the solution. So I tell people, make it simple for the clients to buy from you. And we'll talk a little bit about pricing models uh, in this webinar a little bit. And I'm, I'm thrilled that, that Intronus has now a flat rate model because I've been talking about flat rate uh, services for, for seven years, and that's the way I ran my MSP. So remember, forget about the technology. The client doesn't care. Understand their business. Understand that they want it to work. And help them focus on uh, increasing productivity and profitability. So. Let's talk about why managed services are attractive to the client. Well, we all know predictable monthly, monthly costs. That's what we're taught uh, through every webinar with every vendor out there. Um, you, you're going you're gonna to sell managed services to your client because now they can budget the cost. Well, that's great. Okay? To me, that's fluff. Okay? That's a given. Okay? I look at it as if you're a managed service provider, you are an engaged partner with your client. You and your, car, you and your client are now partners in this growth business. You are now taking operational ownership of all the company technology, and not just the computers and routers and servers and firewalls. You're taking operational ownership of bandwidth, phone systems, phone lines, copiers, software vendors. If, you're, if you don't have letter of agency and you're not um, working directly as the, as the quote-unquote vendor management um, with, those, with those other vendors, then you're not taking operational ownership. You're not successfully being a managed service provider to your client. Okay? We all know that managed services are about reducing downtime and increasing productivity. I think I've beat that dead horse a few times. Um, but again, increasing productivity increases profitability. Okay? Um, if we have operational ownership, we can reduce downtime by being on top of the network and, and making sure our tools work right for us, then we can increase productivity and increase profitability for both us and the client. Now, Another reason that, that managed services are attractive to clients is for service level agreements. Okay? It's basically uh, an agreement, because most of you who are on here are hopefully managed services providers already, have a good service level agreement. Basically, it's you know, saying, uh, doing what you're going to say when, when you're, when you're going to do it. I think I got that right. I hope I got that right. Um, so if you say you're going to uh, respond to a ticket in a certain amount of time, you're going to. Okay. Now, what happens when you don't adhere to your service level agreement? What's the penalty? What's the repercussion? But most managed service providers are able to have processes in place to adhere or exceed the service level agreement they're, that they're promising. And another thing, another reason, the main reason I think it's uh, managed services is attractive to end user businesses is now they have a standard. Okay. We all talk about standards. Okay. But they have standards for support. I'm going to call my service, my MSP, and I'm going to get the same person on the phone, and everything's documented. So all these things are attractive to the client. And when we talk to them about the business, it has nothing to do about the technology and selling them more stuff. It has it has everything to do with how we're going to help their business grow. So uh, a couple of years ago, I had a client that I was working with. He's a former IBMer, and we, we started talking about what's really important to end user businesses. And it doesn't matter if it's a large business or a small business. We all kind of have the same um, needs, right? Uh, and one of them was we wanted to increase our stock price we want work or our company value. Now, I sold my MSP um, because it was valuable based on contracts and works and, and clients I had and a number of reasons uh, that I sold it. Plus, I was offered a, a great big check, uh, which is always important. But most businesses want to increase their company value. Now, how do you increase your company value as a managed service provider? Well, you get more clients, and you have more contracts, and if, if you have to um, um, borrow money, you can take those contracts basically to the bank and talk to your banker and say, listen, we have this uh, projected revenue, and we need to borrow $100,000. Well, they're going to pretty much give it to you if you have that projected revenue and, and the, the company value. Your company valuation is one times, two times, whatever revenue it happens to be. But also your end user clients, okay? How does their company value? Okay, what is the what is the company value, or how are they going to increase that value through technology? How's technology going to help them? So those are some of your the questions that you get to talk to the client about. But that's what they're thinking. They also want to increase their market share. And one of the things I tell a lot of MSPs who are in larger areas, like where I live in Phoenix or in Los Angeles, where I grew up, or New York City or Chicago, is your market is a three to five mile radius from where your office is at. Okay, 
and there's typically tons of businesses that could use your services, small, medium businesses that that uh, that could use your IT services because they want they need good IT support. But what happens? What is your market if you're in a in a more rural area? Okay, is it 100 miles? Is it 50 miles? So understanding your market and and getting more of that market share in being the best at what you're doing. Okay, but also for your client, they want to increase market share. For instance. You know, you have a client that sells widgets, right? Where are they selling widgets? Are they selling it locally? Or are they selling it nationwide? If they're selling it nationwide, then they need a website, they need e-commerce, they need all this, all these technology-related um, services that you can help them with as a managed service provider to help them increase market share. We all want to reduce our costs. We all want to reduce our overhead um, and also increase our efficiency. Technology helps that. So. As a managed service provider, you're not ne not necessarily going to help them reduce their overhead costs every on a daily basis. But a managed server, if you're managing their servers, and maybe you can squeeze one more year out of it, so that's one more year of a capital investment, okay? Or extend their warranty on their firewall another year, okay? And through monitoring and maintenance and and ongoing proactive support, you can increase efficiency because they're not going to have as much downtime. So these are these are three things that are important to the client. I got some more. Um, so we talk about when, when a company has a bad day, bad quarter, bad week, bad year. They want to improve something. You know, they want to turn something around. Okay. So through technology and through uh, ongoing maintenance and managed services, so to speak, uh, we can help our clients turn something around that was bad. Now we hear a lot that it's too expensive. I can't afford four thousand dollars a month for IT support. Okay. We hear that a lot. Don't ever let price be a barrier to your success. Okay. Sure, we may be more expensive going in, but the long-term effect is going to help them turn around whatever went bad. Sometimes you, and, and I've used this, sometimes, Mr. Customer, you have to spend money to make money. Another thing that's really important to, to businesses is their company culture. And I was having a conversation this morning with a partner of mine in Chicago about culture for his business and what his clients are looking at. Well, it's also culture for the client's business. When you're interviewing a client to be one of, your, one of your customers or one of your clients, you want to make sure they have the right culture, that you're working with the right people. Now, the C-level is one thing, but the rank and file, the people that work in the business, is another thing. You want to make sure it's a good company to work with and, and vice versa. They're going to check you out to see what your culture is like with your, with your people, with your staff, who you're taking on, also who your customers are. So company culture is very, very important and, and, and employee stickiness and client stickiness. Protect your turf is, is something that we came up with, is basically protect your clients. Um, and again, conversation this morning I was having with an MSP in Chicago. Uh, is about, you know, uh, he was telling a story and, and, and you know, the, the customer wasn't his yet. And it probably isn't his yet because the customer's not ready to leave. The cust and, and he says, well, our price was less. I said, the customer's not going to leave on price. They're going to leave on better service. And if they need somebody new now, okay, if they're unhappy. Now, the way for you to protect your turf is to do a better job than your competitor, okay, is to build stickiness with the client. The way for your client to protect their turf is to do the same thing. Have it easy for their customers to buy from them. Have it easy to acquire new customers and protect those, those current clients they have. Also, enhance your brand. That goes to marketing. How are you enhancing your brand? Or even better, how are you enhancing your client's brand as a managed service provider? Okay. If you're not beneficial to enhancing the client and their brand and their image, then you're just another vendor. Everybody wants to increase sales. But more importantly, to increase sales, we have to have good customer satisfaction. What sells clients is testimonials, Okay, is word of mouth. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you on this webinar uh, get business from referrals, and that's based on customer satisfaction or, or people that you know through networking groups. But to increase your sales drastically, you need to have super satisfied customers who are willing to go to bat for you. And that's what they're trying to do. Your customer is also trying to satisfy their customer and increase sales. And it's, it's, a, it's like a pendulum. You, know, you, you want to do both, and if you're increasing too many sales and don't have enough people, your customer satisfaction goes down. So you've got to help your clients manage this, just like you do in your business. You have to be able to manage your your clients as well as your growth um, to uh, to be beneficial to your new clients that you are taking on as well as your your uh, your legacy and long term clients. 
So I like to talk about value and benefit. I talk about benefit more often than, than, than value. Um, people say all the time that you need to add value to what you sell. But I ask people all the time, what is added value? I've never been able to have anybody give me a good definition of added value. See, I like to bring value up front. So I ask people, is there such thing as added value? If not, or if you have a good definition to it, I'd love to get an email from you. Uh, but wouldn't you rather be a benefit to your client? And I ask people a lot, why do you think your clients, do you think your clients want to buy your services or do they want to make a profit? Well, of course they want to make a profit, so stop trying to sell them their stuff and be, become beneficial to them. Become a benefit to their business. Become an asset to them. Uh, position yourself at the top. Okay? If you're trying to sell to an IT manager or to an office manager, which is mostly in the small businesses, um, and the office manager needs to go into her boss to get approval to buy something from you, you're not that what the industry likes to call that trusted advisor. You're not getting in front of the decision maker. So if you're not beneficial to the business, the decision maker is not seeing you as a value to them or a benefit to them. But if they do, then you're meeting with the boss. Now you're the outsourced you're sitting at that C-level table, and instead of going to the office manager, you're going to the boss or the owner, and you're getting things done. Remember, the boss cares about two things, productivity and profitability. So a lot of IT firms fail at making the transition to the MSP business model, um, whether they're large companies. I've worked with very large MSPs, and I've worked with small MSPs that just, they fail at it. Um, you know, it's just, for a number of reasons. Number one, it's outside their comfort zone. Flat rate services outside their comfort zone. The business model, they don't get it. They're, they've been technicians. They need to be more consultative now. It, it's really outside their comfort zone. They don't see it. They don't feel it. They're not, they're not getting it. They're not taking the time to understand the client's business. They don't really understand what their client does or what their client's business is or what their model. So I tell people, start engaging with their clients and new prospects now. Okay, Get to know them. If you want to have that long-term relationship with them, because managed services is all about a relationship, understand your client's business. Understand how you can help them profit more. Okay. A lot of times they just don't know how to consult. So consulting is, is very, very simple. I do it for a living. It's asking questions and listening. If you ask the right questions to your clients or prospects, you're going to be able to give them the answers that are going to help their business. You're going to understand their business better. If you listen to the problems they have, you can now resolve them. We all want to hear ourselves talk. I'm doing it right now, I'm listening to myself, myself talk. I, I've done this presentation a number of times to people, and as a consultant to MSPs, I have to ask them a lot of questions. So I, so I challenge everyone that's on this webinar right now. Come up with 25 power questions that you can ask prospects or even clients and listen to the answers. I can guarantee you if you ask them to your ask these 25 same questions to your current client base, the answers will be very, very similar. Because typically most of our clients are a lot like the others. They're all very similar in size and the way of thinking. That's how you start to consult with your clients. They also fail in a lack of confidence in the pricing and bundling of their services. More importantly, del the delivery of the services. Remember, I was talking about service level agreements. Okay. Well, before we can lead with our service level agreement and say how great it is, we need to be confident that we're selling them enough, something that's profitable to us. We're in business to make money. At the end of the day, we want to we want to be in the black, not in the red. Um, but to deliver services, we need to be, do, be able to do it through a process. If, you don't, if you're not confident in your process, you're doing something wrong. If you don't believe in it, then you've got to change it. Expectations are huge. Okay? The expectation in IT has never been very high. Okay? Uh, a lot of companies will jump from IT provider to IT provider just because of price or something like that. I tell people don't try to be everything to everyone because you will fail at it. Set the real expectations with your clients. So if you have a service level agreement, for instance, that says, we will respond to you within one hour, what is the response? Is it a phone call? Is it an email? Is it the opening of a ticket? Is it escalation? Will we start working on it in an hour? What is the real expectation? The client's going to see right through it if you're not setting the real expectation. So many people try to be everything to everyone. You know, I've made that mistake, same mistake as an MSP in the past. I know very successful marketing people that try to be everything, and they're really good at marketing and sales, but they're not good at process. 
So set the real expectations with your clients. Don't try to be everything. However, if you want to take that operational ownership that, that I was talking about before and you don't know how to sell bandwidth and you don't know how to sell phones and things like that, partner with somebody. Bring in someone that you trust. That way, if you trust them, you're going to set the expectation say, Mr. Customer, I'm going to bring in my partner to do X, Y, Z. Now, we talk about marketing a lot. So we talk about referrals, right? So we, we, you know, we get referrals as MSPs or IT providers. We get referrals from our current customers, or we get referrals from people that we meet in BNI or at the chamber. But you're, a lot of people are waiting for them. You're sitting there waiting for referrals. I say go out and earn them. So one of the things I recommend to, to my clients a lot is that we go and have quarterly business reviews. Quarterly business review is, is good for two things. It's really a sales call. But it's good to just kind of review if they're happy with you. If they're happy with you, then you can ask them, are, we, are you willing to refer me any business? So just last week, I was in Los Angeles working with a client of mine, and we went and saw a couple of his clients. Because, you know, I like to find out the good and the bad, what they like, what they don't like, just so I can help them improve their business. And I turned to a couple you know, the people, and I said, would you be willing to, to give a testimonial or refer any business? And immediately, one of them had a referral right then and there for him. And I turned to my client and said, see, you're not asking for them. You're earning them, but you're not asking for them. So if you feel you're doing a good job for the client and the client thinks you're doing a good job, well, then, then that's great because the client's perspective is all that matters. And if you understand the client's perspective and you can understand their business and you're setting the expectation and you're confident in everything you're doing with them, you can ask them for a referral and they will probably give you one or two or five. I tell people all the time you need six referral sources. Six referral sources that are sending you business every single month and once you build that up, you will have referrals coming out your wazoo, and you will have no reason to ever have to do a expensive marketing campaign again. But the biggest reason that IT firms fail at the MSP business model, fear. They're afraid of something. They're afraid of asking for business. They're afraid of going out and getting what is due to them. Um, they have a attitude of, Oh, uh, let's just call it. Um, they 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 put the shingle up and they expect the business to come to them rather than go out and get it. Folks, building an MSP and doing and, and and the business model of managed services is a job. It is very difficult. It is hard work. Nobody becomes successful overnight. Okay. If you don't think that there is hard work to be put into this business model, do us all a favor. Close up shop and go get a job because there are a lot of people out there working really, really hard and we don't need slackers saying, hey, buy from me. I believe that your fear of success typically is because you are afraid to put your hand out and say, hi, my name is so-and-so, I am an IT service provider, we help other businesses benefit. And I've seen it too many times. So I'm going to move on to the IT business and the business of IT. Typically, I've seen this, and this is, these are, I'm going to show you a couple pictures coming up right now that are actually quite funny, but they are real pictures that I took with my cell phone um, here in Phoenix, Arizona, where I live. This is what I call the IT business. Okay? Um, I saw both these cars parked out of PetSmart one day. I was picking up my, uh, my dog from getting groomed, and I saw both these cars parked out front. And if you look at the one on the left, TJ's Computer Service, it's uh, like a Reliant K car, like a 1991 Reliant K car, something like that, but with that dirty sign. Now, I have no problem with wraps or signs or whatnot on your car to advertise your business. I'm a big fan of it. But is this the image that you want? Or the one on the left, do you want to be perfect computer services? Is that really the marketing you want? Now, I, I'll tell you right now, both these companies will never be managed service providers. They will never be consultative. They're the folks who go out and fix the computers and take care of the residential business, which is really not a managed services uh, focus. But this is the IT business. This is the computer fixing business. I want to talk about the business of IT. Okay, the business of IT is very simple. You need to understand five things. Every company, whether they're one person or 1,000 people, need IT support. IT need to, needs to be profitable for the business. It's not about the servers, PCs, firewalls, laptops, etc. It's not about that because they will break. That is why Dell, Lenovo, HP, and whatnot offer three-year warranties next day on-site or same business day on-site because we all know it will break. Okay, It's how we maintain them and how we support them is part of our business. 
Business owners, again, care about two things, productivity and profitability. I cannot say it enough. Okay. Staff's product, productive. We're able to bill more. We're able to do payroll. We're able to do invoices. We're able to do more things. You're in, able to invoice more, invoice faster. You get your money faster. That leads to dollars at the bottom line. One of the most important things about understanding the buyers of customer service, not technology. And only once somebody is pushed back on this for me because they were actually a software house, okay? But you don't really invent anything. You support Dell, you support Lenovo, you support Intronus, you support all these other vendors that are that are in the business of technology. Intronus is a technology company because they're a software company. Okay? You're in the business of customer service, not technology. So I want to give you some takeaways. We have about 15 minutes left. I want to give you some takeaways. Managed services, remember, is a way of doing doing business, not a line item. I had a I had a client for a short time that would sell his RMM tool as a line item to his clients. I have no idea why, absolutely no idea why. Your managed service is a way of doing business, not a line item. Sell it as a package. Sell it as a a, a service. It, it you know um, anything can be a managed service, but it is a way of doing business that that's billed every single month. It's backed by a service level agreement. Get past your fears. Your clients and prospects are looking for you to be the expert. Okay, they're hiring you for a reason because you said something or someone said something nice about you. Now it's time to earn their respect because they're looking for you to be the expert. The tools are for you to use. Your RMM tool and whatnot are for you to use, not for your client. Do not sell your tools to your client. You want to sell Intronus? Fine. Brand it for you. Make it Joe's Computer Backup Solution. Intronus has a great white label. Okay, um, make it for you. Intronus is your tool. When offering a client an MSP solution, make sure it fits into their long-term business model. One of the things I used to do when I when I was an MSP is when I was consulting with my clients, I would say, what is your what is your 12, 24, and 36 month business plan? If they didn't have one, they were not a good client for me. Okay? They were not a good client because they were not looking in the future. They they wanted a computer fixer and that's not the business we were in. Remember to be more consultative with your clients. It's very, very important that you listen to them, you consult with them, you make sure they have the technologies they need to be productive. And remember, the key to success is MSP's engagement, but not only with the decision maker, it's also with the employees, the rank and file, the people that are doing the work. Because they're great referral sources, but they're also the ones who are going to tell you the truth about what's going on internally, who's having problems, who, you know, where are the big glitches, what software's problems they're having. You're not going to hear that in your quarterly business review. So ha train your staff to talk to the rank and file. That's really all I have. I'm going to kind of turn it over to, to Neil to talk more about the, 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 the U2 and the, uh, the new uh, flat rate services. I'm looking forward to some of your questions at the end of, uh, at the, end of the webinar. Thank you, Neil. It's over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Stu. Great presentation. A lot of really good advice and 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 uh, knowledge that uh, you know I, I've heard from you before. It's a great presentation. Um, and absolutely, as we have joint clients um, between our two companies, you know they only say good things and and how their business is now growing. Um, after listening to to the advice of uh, of your consulting firm. Um, so without further ado, I mean, Stu, Stu gave me an introduction, but what is U2? Uh, you may have seen our marketing. I'm sure you have if you're on this webinar. Um, Intronus is saying uh, to stop selling storage. Selling storage um, is not the way to go uh, and sell um, cloud backup and recovery solutions to small business. Um, as promised, I wanted to give the attendees more information about our new unlimited plans. Um, they are now available. Um, and what we are doing is we are offering the entire Intronus Echo platform for one flat rate per SMB site per month, and this includes unlimited local and unlimited cloud storage. Wait, say that again? Unlimited local and unlimited cloud storage. Yes, I said it. Um, our flat rate pricing fits perfectly into managed services business model because it allows you to start thinking of data protection less of a line item and more as a premium service that can generate serious revenue uh, for your SMBs. To illustrate this, um, we have a wonderful uh, chart here. You know, this chart really describes the opportunity that it is available to you um, on the new plan. Um, the big drivers uh, of the managed service or the MSP opportunity um, is the increasing number of devices for the businesses that need protection, uh, the rising need for additional uh, storage that needs protection, and really a lot of increased applications. As your business, as the businesses you support grow, they have additional applications that need support and that need protection. Because your cost to Intronus is flat, 
your ability to profit from a partnership with Intronus grows considerably as you protect even more devices, more storage, and more applications. Um, it sounds corny, but true. Um, it is limitless profit potential depending how you package and price this and how you go to market with your clients. Um, it's, it's truly exciting stuff. We have seen uh, a great traction in this over the past um, 60 days as, as we have essentially been, been going to market with this kind of behind the scenes and then also with our public uh, selling of this starting in the beginning of June. Um, it is truly changing the way that managed service providers are protecting small businesses, number one, because they're properly protecting the small business. They're not worried about the cost per gig and, and having that co cost a conversation with their client. They're able to have that consultative conversation that Stu was talking about and asking them, what's the important application? What needs to be protected? And they're properly protecting the small businesses the right way instead of having that conversation about how many nickels or how many uh, dimes it's going to cost in extra storage to properly protect that business. To find out more or to get a quote, um, if you are a current customer or, or you're, no longer, you're not using our services at this time and you'd like a demo or a trial of our product, we do offer a trial, feel free to point your favorite web browser to intronus.com slash no limits and say no to storage limits. Um, and what I'd like to do is I'm actually going to toss it back to Stu here. Um, he also has an offer for the attendees of this webinar. Uh, we understand that it takes time out of your, your busy day to join us, Stu and I, today on this webinar, and we re really do appreciate that. There are some questions coming in. Um, feel, please feel free to, to sh sh ask questions on either the Intronus, the U2, or, or, or uh, Stu's presentation as well. Stu, over to you. All right. Great. Thank, thanks again. Um, so I wanted to make, make myself available to anybody who... Uh, who has some questions about their business or wants to change some, some things up. So what I'd like to do for anybody who's on the webinar, um, I'd like to offer two free 30-minute phone consultations. Talk about your business, your pricing, your sales process. Um, just vent about vendors. Whatever it happens to be, I'll give you 60 minutes. Um, just email info at stuartselfs.com and put in there in the subject line uh, uh, Intronus webinar. I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to know what your pain is. Uh, you know, I'm not going to sell you on my services. I'm pretty busy right now. I do have a couple slots open, but I just want to help as many people as possible. So I'll give you an hour of my time, you know, based on my relationship with Intronus, and just l let me give you some things, some tips, some tricks to work on in your business. Um, and, you know, that's that's really all, all I have to offer um, is, is 60 minutes of my time, um, no obligation, just, you know, if you want me to profile you and understand your business some more, I'm happy to do that. We'll I'll, I'll help you develop some process, and um, you can go on your merry way. If you choose to want to work with us, then that's a whole other issue and it's a whole other conversation. But two free 30-minute phone consultations, uh, no obligation to anybody. Just send us an email and put uh, Intronus Webinar in there. So now we're just going to kind of open up to Q&A. Um, any questions uh, on, the, um, on the webinar? I think, Stu, I have, I have uh, one question for you as, as they're coming in here. Um, okay. You know, we, we have a joint client, and I think, you know, we were speaking in the beginning about the new YouTube plan that's coming in. And do you right. see that changing our joint client's way that he's kind of adding value or, or the benefit, really, to use your <laughs> words, right, about his data, his data protection that, that he's offering Absolutely. his clients? Absolutely. I actually had a call with him this morning. He's a, that client I was telling you about in Chicago. He is so excited about the new way of doing things that he is going to start leading with uh, uh, security, which is backup as security, right? Um, being able to spin the spin servers up in the cloud and, and whatnot. Before, it's, it's been too cost prohibitive for him, right? You know, people would push back on, on, uh, on the cost of, say, a buck a gig or two bucks a gig or what happens to be. That, that whole conversation now goes away. He can go into, into prospects that he's talked to a year ago or two years ago that, that, that he knows needs backup and say, hey, we're going to charge you flat rate per site. And now he's able to bundle that flat rate per site. And he's not, not only going to be more profitable, but now he's got more peace of mind for his clients that he knows the data is being backed up. So yeah, it's going to be huge. And I'm actually going out to see him at the end of July, and we're going on sales calls, and, and we're, going to, we're actually going to lead with you know, data storage or, or disaster recovery and, and say, hey, now it's a flat rate. Awesome. Very, very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm very we, excited. We, we, we did have a question that, that came in, Stu, and we, you can see it in the panel as well. So I'm, I'm going to ask it a little different way than it was written. Um, and it, it's more about technology, but one question that came in, and it's definitely for you, is um, 
they're, they're mostly, this, this MSP is mostly a 80-20, you know, Mac to Windows type shop. They're looking at solutions to manage their business without naming any names, um, whether it be on the RMM side. Um, they, they're basically seeing challenges because they have to support many different technologies. You know, what have right. you seen as you've worked with consultants? You know, is there a magic answer or, you know, do you have any advice here for, for this gentleman? As yeah, kind of goes um, and, I, you know, I, I welcome that person that actually emailed me offline because I have some more in-depth information. However, um, I have partners that, that do uh, Mac and PC, okay? And there are some tools that, that their strengths are Mac, okay? Back in the day when I was an MSP, I was a Kaseya shop. Uh, Kaseya is very strong on Mac, but they're very expensive. Now more and more tools like Continuum and GFI and whatnot are, are getting more into being able to support Mac. So I do have a I do have a partner in New Jersey who does who has a large print shop as a client, and they're ninety percent Mac. He's had to get two RMM tools to uh, support his product. The key thing that I told him when he when he implemented both tools is make sure they both integrate with his PSA, so he can see the tickets come into a centralized dashboard. Make sure you have a centralized dashboard. And again, if this person uh, sends me an email, I and mean, you can actually send it to me direct at Stuart at StuartSelfs.com. Uh, I'd love to have a 10-minute call with you and, and tell you how the um, uh, how the client took care of this. But it was really quite simple, um, and it was uh, it was good. It was good for the client, and, and the print shop super super happy. So awesome, very cool. We also have another question for myself here, but I'll ask it to myself. We have another MSP that chatted in. And he essentially asked, you know, Intronus has typically been known as a file folder, and, he, you know, he heard that um, physical image in VM. And, and he's basically asking about some of the performance of restores, et cetera. Um, the short answer is yes. If you, if you looked at us before, um, the imaging technologies that we've integrated as part of the Echo platform um, definitely allow for a, a faster recovery time objective and, and recovery point objective. Um, and as that circle kind of the graph illustrates with data protection, application protection, and business protection, um, we truly are trying to minimize the amount of solutions uh, that you have to use for data protection of your clients. Um, there's, a, there's an interesting slide, and you know, do talk about it's not about technology, but it is interesting. As a managed service provider, you have solutions to manage solutions for your client. Uh, and, and us as tech software vendors are trying to tell you more solutions to manage it. Um, our, our job is obviously to help reduce the amount of solutions um, that you have to use to manage your clients. Um, but we, you, you know, it's always it's always a challenge, as I know, in managed service providers, especially on the question we got with with uh, you know the Mac and and the Windows uh, complexity. A couple of questions other, here. Oh, go ahead, Stu. No, I was just going to see if there's any other questions. I think that pretty much covers it. I'm going to give everyone a, another minute here or so, see if there's any additional questions that have come in. Oh, I was waiting for that question, Stu. I called, I called this question before we started the webinar. So one of the questions that, that we ended up getting is, can you talk a little bit um, about pricing? Um, I can talk about the pricing <laughs> model. Um, you know, from the insurance perspective, we are declaring that you know buying per, per gig and reselling per gig um, is dead, for, you know, according to the badges there. Um, if you'd like additional um, pricing questions, please feel free to go to intronus.com slash no limits. Um, if you are a current customer, one of our partners, uh, management specialists, will be reaching out. Uh, and then if you're a prospect or, you know, you're looking or interested in our services, our sales team will reach out and be able to kind of give you the rundown as far as um, what it looks like for uh, our unlimited storage uh, plan. Uh, and then also uh, other plans um, with the whole flat rate. And then Stu, I know you know your services are very reasonable, but you know if you're interested in Stu's services because it didn't specify whether it was Intronus or Stu or, or Self Consulting, um, you know obviously reach out to Stu. We'd be more than happy to talk about his his uh, pricing as well. Yeah, I have uh, two different packages: one for smaller MSPs and one for larger MSPs, and it all depends on the level of engagement and, and really what you need. Um, so again, uh, I'm happy to offer two free 30-minute co phone consultations. Please reach out. Um, like I said, no obligation. Um, check out Intronus and uh, Intronus.com slash no limits for their new flat rate price storage. Uh, when I heard about this, I, 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 I said to Neil, I said, uh, I said, I wish I would go be an, if I was going to go be an MSP today, I would sign up for this. Um, so um, 
I'm going to try and put a lot of my partners into working with Intronus and going to this no limits, just so you know. I appreciate that. Thank you, Stu. We do have a question for you, and you know they did actually put for Stuart at the end just to make sure that I didn't answer it. I guess I'm kidding. Uh, I'm the person that asked the question. Um, Stu, for you, what is the best way to move from a small one-person shop to a larger, uh, to a larger, and where the revenue level sweet spot? Oh, where the, where is the I, I see where is the where revenue, revenue level sweet spot? I hacked that question for you. Okay. Uh, well, I'm reading it as well. Um, we work with a lot of one-person shops. Uh, we have two or three of them that we work with right now. Um, revenue level sweet spot for me is typically a million dollars. If you're a million dollar MSP or just under, you want to get to that million dollars. I want to get you to five. Okay. I you know I think where I max out is about 15 million in revenue. Um, I'm not. I don't want to be that high level of consultant to a 15, 20 million dollar year MSP. Um, but I have a partner that's thirty-five thousand dollars a year. That's that is that's his revenue. Obviously, he's growing. He's going to finish the year at about a hundred k. But I'm going to take him from thirty-five thousand to a hundred k this year. Um, I have partners that are at two hundred k that I'm going to take to about uh, four hundred, four hundred fifty thousand dollars in revenue this year. So really, you know, they say this all the time. Um, it's it's how big can you dream? How big do you want it? Now, if you're uh, the best way to move from a one-person shop to a larger shop is to start hiring people, but hiring the right people, the people that are going to engage with your mission, your vision of your business, and where you want it to go. Um, it's a conversation of really where do you need a person now? Do you need an administrative person? Do you need a technical person? Uh, are you too busy being the technician versus the entrepreneur, like they say in the e-myth, and I recommend that everybody reads that. So it really is a conversation that I, I'd like to have with you um, to understand your business model a little bit better. But my sweet spot is really from zero to fifteen million dollars in revenue, and we work with all size different companies. Um, I had a client back in the day in Boston who's actually an Intronus partner um, that came to me. They were about two million, and four years later they were thirteen million. So uh, we did a really good job with them. Sold a lot of Intronus too. So it it doesn't really matter the size of business you are. Um, it's if you're willing to engage and get your get your team and your staff engaged and and and, and make your Make your vendors a little bit accountable, okay? Um, I know having worked with Intronus and their team for the last uh, few years, and I, you know, uh, I knew Neil and the and the founders long time before they were anything, um, much much uh, much smaller than they are now. They were in a little tiny uh, closet of an office. Um, so, but they're in, they, they engage with their MSVs. If if there's a problem, they're going to be accountable to it. So I really liked the way companies like Intronus will work with uh, with their partners. So. Um, but moving from, from a small one-person shop, you know, marketing, sales, engagement, hiring people, there's a it's business process. Uh, another question for for you, Stu. Here, um, can, can you? And it's a question on pricing of, of managed services. What sort of price do you recommend a fully managed service be sold at to our clients? It all depends on what your costs are. We've got to understand what our cost and our run rate is. Okay, and so a lot of things that I, I do with my clients is I I, I let me back up. I believe in the per user pricing model. Okay, because at the end of the day we're supporting people. But if you can't, you you want to be fair in your market. You don't want to be the highest price guy, but you don't want to be the lowest price guy. But we have to understand what our run rate is. And understanding our run rate, we need to take our P and L. We need to take salaries. We need to take all all this into consideration. Our cost of goods sold into consideration to understand what our raw run rate is to deliver one minute of service. Once you understand that, then we can work on a profit margin. Um, typical profit margin in our industry is somewhere from 58 to 62 percent. That's what my clients are typically running at. And um, it's fair pricing. Now, industry standard around the country has been from 125 to $150 an hour, or $150 per user. Um, I, again, depends on the market, depends on where you're at, depends on your cost, depends on a lot of different things. But like I said, I like the per user uh, uh, all-in model, and uh, anywhere from $125 per user on up. Uh, I've got partners that are selling at, um, you know, um, $225, $250 per user, depending on their market. So. Um, the average per user in Canada. I see that question too. Um, I think we're pretty much about the same. I don't have any partners in Canada, but I could find that out for you. I do know a number of MSPs that, that do use the per user model in Canada, and I can find that out to you, out for you if you want to send me an email. Okay. 
Neil, anything else? Um, I think we might have lost Neil. Um, anyway, there's another question. Being a prior MSP, we're in the market today. You didn't lose me, Stu. I gotta, I gotta remember to come off mute. You know, it's like oh, any okay. true webinar. You know, it's like you got the the uh, the funnies and the comic the uh, the comic stuff as you're going through it. Um, but yeah. But I what I did say is we had another Canadian partner that'd like to know the pricing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I, I saw that. Um, uh, yeah, if you want to just reach out to me, I will get you that answer. Um, I think we're right around the same. I have consulted with Canadian partners in the past and put them into that business model. It worked out real well for them. Um, so, but I'll be more than happy to talk to you about your particular market. Um, and I see this question here about being a prior MSP, where is the market today to start an MSP? Well, that's a really great question, and I want to give it uh, some, some thought for just a second. And I'm going to kind of riff a little bit, because I've never been really asked that, that question. Um, the, the market today to start an MSP, I think, is, is wide open. Um, I think uh, anybody can be very successful as a managed service provider today, but you need three things. You need to uh, have great support, okay, great processes in place. You've got to have cloud services because businesses are being uh, marketed to cloud by Microsoft, by their local phone company and whatnot, and you have to be able to sell the path to the cloud. And when I say that, you need to be able to own the bandwidth. So I wrote a blog a couple weeks ago about um, you know, uh, it, you know, got telecom right, and I think MSPs today need to be successful in selling telecom um, bandwidth to the cloud and owning that relationship. Because if they don't own the relationship, if they're giving it to somebody else, they're going to lose out on market share to 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 the to the telcos who are now offering managed services. Because I just saw that CenturyLink is now offering f uh, uh, hourly managed services to businesses. Uh, it was on uh, MSP Mentor just the other just this week. So. Your telcos are going after your business, folks. So you need to sell them storage, security, cloud, and and how to get to the cloud. Thanks, too. There's a there's another great question for you as well. You know. Yeah, um, I see that about all per user pricing there. Right. Uh, when pricing per user, how do you handle more demanding clients that require more time? That's a great question. Um, so I I've got a couple questions back, and so I'm going to kind of asking myself, do the clients require more time on site or they or do they require more time just remote support? If it's on more time on site, bill them for it. Okay? Bill them for it. If they say we want you for instance, I got a great example. I had a client of mine back when I was an MSP here in Phoenix that had five people. And I was a typically $150, $175 a user and with a thousand dollar a month minimum. So they were automatically a thousand dollars a month, right? One of his one of the CEO's requirements was that they actually have me, not any of my staff, have me on site every Monday from 8 to 12. Okay, my billable time was $250 an hour. So I actually billed this client of five people $4,500 a month for full managed services, and they got me on site every Monday morning. Now, I set up a dock station, set up an IP phone in their, in their office for, for my office. So it was just a remote office for me is all it was. We had, a, we had a quick meeting from 8 to 9 in the morning. I worked with their staff. I was able to take care of my other stuff. But they just wanted me on site for four hours. I'm fine with that, but I'm going to bill them for it. And they were happy to pay $4,500 a month. So for those needy clients that want somebody on site more often, bundle it into the services. So instead of $150 a user, go $300 a user or $250 a user, but bundle it into the price. Awesome. Very cool. And you got to thank you. Thank you, Stu. Oh. <laughs> I love You're the question, everyone. panel. On go. <laughs> no, um, right on. I think I think that's it. And this, you know, we have time for one more question. Um, otherwise, we are going to to wrap up here. All right. Let Let's take it home, Stu. All right. Again, uh, love to hear from y'all. Anybody who's who's on this. Uh, Webinar, two free 30-minute phone consultations, no obligation. Um, I'm happy to just you know hear you out, hear, let you vent. Um, I'm going to pimp out Intronus. Thank you for, for, for allowing me to be on this webinar. Intronus.com slash no limits. Really talk to them. Talk to them about your business model because they're going to help you sell more cloud backup and DR, which is it's huge right now, uh, making sure you can get the data back. That's the most important thing. Anybody can back up data, you know, even on a thumb drive, right? 
But if you lose that thumb drive, now you've lost the data. But it's about recovery. It's always been about recovery. So I'm going to pimp out Intronus. And there you go, Neil. Intronus.com slash no limits. Awesome. Thank you, Stu. Um, if you're interested in our new YouTube pricing, please feel free to reach out at the, at the link that, that Stu has said. We thank you all for your time today. We understand, again, that you're busy and taking an hour out um, it is not easy to do. But hopefully this was, this was uh, informative. If you do have any additional questions that maybe you weren't able to ask during the webinar, please fill them in to the questionnaire that you'll be given at the end of the webinar. And we'd be more than happy to follow up with answers to your questions. Again, if um, you, Stu asks you to follow up, send an email to, to Stu, and he will also be able to see the comments that you put in those, uh, those uh, questionnaires at the end. So this is Intronus. Neil from Intronus, thank you so Stuart, much. Stuart Self Consulting. Life. Sorry about that. And good day. <laughs> nope, no <laughs> worries. Great job, Stu. It'll be, it'll be in All the right. comic reel at the end of the webinar. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Have a good day. All right. Bye-bye, everyone.